Hi guys, so Cynthia had a question and it's about she asked literally just what is what will M Nadi do this week? That's all she asked. But I believe she meant as far as the Brett Kavanaugh investigation is concerned, right? Because I think if you all know that he is representing Julie Swetnick, who is the person with the allegations about gang rape. And so I I had done a, an audio reading on the actual, what she may have witnessed or happened to her, okay, could have happened to her, and it's very serious, okay? So, so in addition to that, someone else, Elise, on, on uh, YouTube, she said something that, like, she had, she, she had met Kavanaugh, in the, in, I guess, a few days ago or something, and he told her that in 72 hours, there will be more information coming out, okay? So, so, basically, I feel that stuff's going to come out, okay? So, but then back to, to Cynthia's question, what will he do this week? Okay, because I, we feel that, well, say we, let's say a lot of people feel that he knows a lot. Okay, and I don't know, you know guys, I feel like it's so much information online, and uh, but that I sometimes can't get hold of everything, even though I do a lot of research and everything. I just feel that, for example, you know, when I said this, I remember that I feel like someone else mentioned in one comment, or maybe I saw it on Twitter, that Kevin uh, uh, Avnadi apparently has information about the fin financial payments related to Kevin. So let's see. Let's find out, okay? All right. Okay, so back here. Closing my eyes. Back to the question. Cynthia's question. So what will Michael Avnadi do this week? Especially as far as his client... Julie Swetnick is concerned and Kavanaugh. What will he do this week in terms of making information public? What will, what will Michael Avenatti do this week as far as making information public is concerned? Okay, so I just saw, guys, I saw, it's like a weird, oh, you know, it's a weird thing. It, it's, um, it showed, so I saw her, Julie, and then I saw all these papers. Imagine if there was a bust of Kavanaugh, like you see an image of him, and then below, it's like thousands of, thousands of documents, pieces of paper. And I'm, and, I, and after I opened my eyes, I was like, oh, that's right, you remember how there was all these these documents that were hidden, right? There was all these records that they did not want to release. And I feel like the records, before before I connected the two when I opened my eyes, I was thinking that um, it was documents discussing what have happened, okay? So they will have witnesses coming forward, okay, corroborating her, her testimony. But I feel that there's, now when I opened my eyes, I was like, oh, this is, these are the, some of the things they are hiding. Okay, some of the investigations that had already happened on him, onto him, like related to him. And I feel like, what would they say? There's credible evidence, credible witnesses that this could have happened. I'm getting here, guys. Yale Dean, okay? I don't know if it's true. I feel like there was an internal 
internal investigation, Yale investigation. And this is, n I don't think it has ever been made public, but that they, similar to, to what this investigation is looking to uncover, it's not that obviously it's going to say this, ha how do you say that? It's like, there's a lot more that we don't know and there's going to be a lot of information coming out that was suppressed. Okay, so, <coughs> I'm sorry, but why, what were the Republicans hiding about his record? What was it? Guys, it's interesting, you know, it's going back to the Yale again, it's saying that he was a dis disruptive person, he wasn't well-liked, and he was seen as a disruptive. Nowadays, it's a good thing, right, and especially technology, but it's not, he was not, uh, he's just, like I said, it's weird, it has this weird energy that he was, especially the wind across his path, he was not a good memory, okay? He was a bully, and he was a drunk. Okay, and this goes back to your, I feel like there have been, oh, this is it, guys, okay? This is interesting. I'm yeah, It's getting more, making more sense now. It's almost as if Yale had already conducted internal investigations into this, okay? And it hasn't made, been made public. And it was made public in, not made public, it was shared with, it's in his record somehow, okay? And it oh two things that it showed that he was uh he threatened people, okay, and he was aggressive in that way too. It wasn't just sexual, okay, it's that he was a very belligerent his the stuff that we saw is consistent with Oh and I guys, you know, I'm getting this interesting. You know, because okay, so how Yale residential colleges work is that when you get into Yale, you have the separate, if you're an undergrad, you get into these college, what were called colleges, right? So these are residential colleges and you are always associated with these colleges when you graduate. So when people ask, oh, what were you, uh, were you, it's like, I was whatever, Seabrook 76 or whatever. There's different, uh, there's different residential colleges. So what I'm getting here is that there's all these, there's, complaints filed within these residential colleges okay by women one or two even about him he was a very disruptive student okay and uh, and uh, and it's I feel like again in a weird way I saw before in the other reading that I think he'll have holds the key to a lot of these a lot of allegations and this goes goes back okay to this anyway so let me go back to Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so so going back to the core question here, what does Avnadi have? Avnadi has with more witnesses on her side. Okay, he has somehow I don't know how he releases or finds these documents that were suppressed before. And I, how does he find these documents? People leak it to him. Guys, and I feel like, can I kind of say, this is like, this is kind of very moving to say this. A lot of the women, you know, for example, a lot of administrative work is done by women, right? So, for example, National Arc, I'm not saying that a person in the, I feel like there's all, all these quote-unquote little people on the way, okay, who collaborate to make these this possible, to share what they come across. So a lot of people put their careers on, on, at risk by revealing this but they feel like just as dr ford did they're like you know what i'm not gonna let this motherfucker you think you're gonna get away with this bitch you think you're gonna go out there and yell at us no no let's bring the truth to the table mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have attitude problem you do you say we lie you say we don't matter Put a little pause. Press the pause. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, so this is it, guys. I think uh, some information is leaked to him. Because I feel like people don't know. 
some people don't trust to share for New York Times is do great job lately it's like no but I feel like there's something about Kavanaugh the sense that he he gets things done like he he threatens them or he you know he gets there's something something like that okay that he he gets he gets this so so anyway so yeah so I think he'll make public some past documents related to all of the records the whatever thousands of documents that we have never seen connected to him and guys you know it's so interesting I'm seeing I saw the three women that we know of, okay, Debbie, Julie, and Dr. Ford. And behind them, it's as if there is an army behind each one of them because the people who, a lot of people have reached out to each one of them is saying, oh, I was there, or my sister knew about, I knew this guy of this, you know, they, they kind of like decided, a lot of people who witnessed this decided they're going to take a position. I saw it happen. I'm going to talk about it. I don't care. People who are head of investment banks, who are the lawyers, who are teachers, who are at all walks of life, and their classmates, okay, some people who come for money, others who, who don't necessarily, it's just like a lot of different people who are, who went to school there or knew or had family members who did, are going to decide to like, you know what, they did it, so I have to do it too. I'm willing to do it. And I feel like they behind these people who decide to talk is a lot of money meaning they come from money or they're successful or they so they can't be you know what i mean it creates a, a wall of people who can't be done like their experiences can't be denied okay which is, it's unfortunate to say that for example if everyone worked at mcdonald's you would not be the same you know what i mean it's because in a way these women have power and they are a lot of them have power and some men too okay they're successful enough they could give you like okay whatever fuck it i don't care i'm gonna go say it because this is my civic duty okay so so they you know so so they're not alone you know what i mean so this is why guys this is what happens okay so there's a more and more people who can say that the story was true or they were there and they saw something or so you, do, you know what i mean it's not even that it's like someone had a boyfriend. The same thing that happened to the woman who was a girlfriend, the girlfriend of Mark Judge, who said that she he told her something. The same thing, kind of like that. Like such and such knew about it, or it was a well-known thing, or so, you know. So so it becomes harder to deny. Okay. And like I said, the health records, and there's contemporaneous complaints in the residential colleges that make it hard to to deny what happened okay so so guys I just feel like there's a I feel like the whole thing with Kavanaugh he's, he digs himself into a deeper and deeper hole and it's really impossible to pretend that this isn't happening, okay? Yeah, just there's more. It's sort of like it's showing that this the stories that they told went from being something one. Not that there was the stories. The were, stories were very believable. They were not one dimensional, but it's showing that they progress, okay, into becoming something very fleshed out, seen from many twenty or thirty more witnesses appear since the story came out. So. It becomes stronger and stronger so they're like you can't deny that it didn't happen you know what I mean more and more people say I was a witness I saw it or I heard about it or I remember the day or I saw him pass out so so you, you know what I mean so that it's um okay so okay so any information about payments tell me about the gambling that's in who
Okay, guys, so, so, all right. So this is kind of interesting here because it showed that they want to pay him this money. And the person who ends up paying this money is somebody connected to his family. But it's almost as if, for example, the money does not belong to this person. For example, let's say that someone wanted to, to it's hard to even think of an example. I don't even know, guys. It's like, basically, they can't get the, give the appearance that the money was given by someone who was a, an obvious political operative. Like, for example, if it came directly from... The Heritage Foundation, Cato Institute, those kinds of places, okay, or, or Federalist Society. So they found a person, I see his like older guy, about 20 years older than him, who's fam friends with the mother, okay, the mother knows about this, guys, by the way. So this money is deposited into him, or he sells a property to someone, it's like a very well, well layered kind of situation, okay. And uh, maybe the person who bought the property from him overpaid so that the money could go to government. Does this make sense? It's a very, a very shadowy process here, okay? And then it got to Kavanaugh, okay? So, but the FBI can quickly understand how the money got into this person who gave it to Kavanaugh, okay? And it's a man here, I believe also. What is this? What is it? Yeah, I think he's one of, in one of those think tanks. You know, he reminds me of the guy from Federal Society, actually. I, I don't know the... You know, it would be interesting, guys. It would be interesting to see what relationship the head of Federalist Society has with Kavanaugh's mother. If they went to law school... There's something... I feel like he knows something, or he... He's a family friend... Something like that. There's a, he. He hasn't. He's not a, a law partner in a big law firm, which is what he looks like. But he is. I think is one of those influential, far right kind of. He's very well dressed and very um, patrician into the term. So. Because, I know it's interesting, guys, because the the Cokes, I think the Cokes are also involved in this in a way. They they have so many, they have, they do a lot of opposition research. They know a lot about how to find improperty, impropriety in political donations. So they, they know how to go around it because they themselves research it. So, so this is it. It's going to be found out, yeah, by the FBI quickly bank transactions and everything yeah. credit card company or something like that yeah he has you know it's also I don't know if there's a country club there's a sense guys oh maybe this is what I have a sense that this is connected to some sort of like private club like it's not a club it's just, there's something like a club i forgot what it just reminds me of some sort of private club like a country club legal club something like that where it's a very kind of fancy annual expensive annual fees okay and that was paid for him as well and the same person who paid off the country club paid off the credit card debt or is connected to this Wow, guys, you know what? Oh my God. You know what I feel like? Actually, the gambling that is much, oh my God. It's even worse. Okay, I'm just saying. Can I just say, oh my God. I feel like the whole thing with him spending money, overspending is because he spent a lot of money on drugs, to be honest. He has drug debt, not necessary. I was like, it's much more than gambling debt. It's drugs money, okay? In a way, I think he overspent on the credit, he was on credit card because he spent so much money on drugs. Just to give you context, guys, you know the guy who was uh, who was uh, 
Trump's um, economic advisor, Larry something, Kramer, I don't know his name, I don't remember, because it's so remarkable. But he himself, before the financial crisis, admitted that, or after the financial crisis, he admitted that during that time, he had a $100,000 per month Coke habit. So if it's possible to have that drug habit, can you imagine how expensive? So he spent more than a million dollars a year on drugs. So just by that comparison, if a person has a drug problem, you could see how expensive that could get. If you, his salary is apparently 200000 like if you have a serious drug habit, you're going to spend more than you have. You know what I mean? So this is possibly, some of this, this could be related to drugs as well. So are, they, are we going to find out anything about his drug problem? Yeah, I feel like it was hidden in a way. I, somehow, I I feel, guys, that in in there is the connection to drug, mo some sort of drug debt or, or sp overspending because of drug money. He spent a lot on drugs, so he didn't have much left. No, because he needs to yell at people. <laughs> so, so that's that, guys. I feel like this reading is kind of in, it's intense. It just looks like, scattered with all this like information. Okay, so. Okay, so what about this? Is this gonna come out? How is this information about who paid that that's gonna come out? Guys, I, I feel like I need to stop here, but I said before, somehow it was connected to the Russian investigation because um, I feel the intelligence agencies have caught some, you know, uh, people talking, probably in Russian or something, about how Kavanaugh is compromised and he, ha <coughs> he has these debts. Okay, so can you imagine? Very nice, very good for him. <laughs> so... I just feel like it's a bottomless pit of a lot of stuff. It's just intense. It's like, the okay, Kavanaugh, the man who had led the double life. It's going to come out like that, okay? So the double life of Kavanaugh, something like that. It's like he's a person who, he's not what he claims to be at all. And it's not, it's instead of them trying, it's like what the Republicans feared has happened, which is that they wanted to push everything away. But the more time passes, the more it gets dug. And a lot of people who didn't intend on saying anything decided to once they saw his testimony. It's like disgusting. So, so that's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good for you. Great. <laughs> so that's that, guys. Okay? I'm going to stop here. Bye.